Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. I got a request here a good while back that somebody wanted to know more about the cutting torch and a torch in general. And uh, the one I'm going to be showing you today is Oxy Fuel Acetylene. And I'm going to show you pretty much the basics on what you need to know if you're looking for a setup to buy or if you've got one you don't know how to use it. So I'm going to show you some tips on that, some tricks, and we'll just go from there. Uh, stay tuned, it's going to be good. Alright, I'm in the back of my truck here. This is my auction settling setup. And what I was going to show you all is, is basically what you need to set your settling and oxygen on your regulators. Now, generally, most of the time, this is what I have mine set on, is on the settling side is on 5 PSI. You can cut a lot of thickness with only 5 PSI pressure. If I'm not mistaken, you can cut up to 3 inches thick with only 5 PSI. So don't think that you need a lot of, of acetylene gas to, to cut thick stuff. All your, your big metal movement is going to come up here with your, your oxygen. Your oxygen normally, now not always, it depends on the thickness. Most of the time I have it set on 60 PSI. And that's a rule of thumb. thumb is known as the 5-6 rule. 5 on your acetylene, 60 on your oxygen. Now, if you go to thinner metals, if you're cutting nothing thicker than 3 8 plate or something like that, you can set it to about 40. And the lower the thickness, the more you can drop your oxygen. Now, the same is true for thicker metal. You can cut up to probably 1 inch, inch and a half at 60 PSI. If you get any thicker than that, you're going to have to have a lot more uh, oxygen. So. Even with a torch this small, I can cut up to three inches thick and thicker depending on what tip I use and uh, other factors of the metal too. But general purpose, just remember the 5-6 rule and that will help you a lot in your cutting. Okay, I was going to talk a little bit about the torch itself. This one right here, this is the torch that you're going to see out in the world the most in farming, industry, anything. This right here is known as a two-piece torch. It consists of a body, which has your regulator for your oxygen settling, and some form of attachment on it. Now this right here has got a cutting attachment on it. If you look over here, these are different attachments that fit different torches. This right here is known as a brazing or welding tip. This right here is another cutting attachment. That's what it looks like without the body on it. This one over here that I have on this torch is known as a rosebud. This right here is used to heat up big areas or to preheat metal. And it's used, you know, to bend metal and whatever you need to do to involve in heat. You know, break things loose, broken bolts, stuff like that. So that's just a few of the attachments. There's, there's more attachments for torches out there. I've seen iron powder uh, attachments for torches that you can build up cast iron with them. A whole bunch of stuff. You can look them up. But anyways, what I was going to get at is... Uh, there are different types of uh, cutting attachments. Uh, this right here has just got a straight tip on it. This one right here, if you notice, it looks like I dropped it and it looks bent, but it's actually made like that. This here is known as a washing tip. It's used to to cut out a weld and very, very handy to to use on, on this type of uh, apparatus, more or less. But that's just a little look into cutting torches. Okay, I'm going to show you how to properly light a cutting torch now, or the cutting end of the torch. First thing you do, turn your oxygen over here on your body on. Okay, you're going to do all your regulating up here with this knob. So, you cut your settling on, barely crack it, and remember, little flame. Always light little flame. You don't want a big flame. So. Pull your flame out, and you regulate your oxygen up here. Okay. Now, oh man, y'all can't see it. This this part section right in here is known as a feather. It's a really, really long, really, really bright uh, flame, more or less. You want to get rid of that feather, so you you turn your oxygen until you can barely see it. Okay, you can camera gets a little bit brighter. Hit your oxygen lever up here and make sure that the cones 
up on the tip here don't get any bigger. So you'll hit your oxygen and be sure that they don't get any bigger. That way you know that you've got a neutral flame as it's known. If you leave that feather in there, that's known as a carburizing flame. That means you got too much fuel, not enough oxygen. If you pull it back too far and you hear it whistling really, really high, that means you got an oxidizing flame. So you want a neutral, neutral flame. Just like that. And to cut a torch off, you cut your, your, your gas off on cutting head. And then your oxygen. So that's pretty much how you do that. Okay, I'm going to show y'all how to properly cut on and cut off a rosebud. So, prop your hand out over here and shoot off a little flame. Don't get a big flame until you get it going. Pull your oxygen on. Okay. That right there is known as a feather. That really bright part, I you about I can't see it. Anyways, you want that feather gone, so you pull it in just past the feather to get it burning bright. Okay. And that's all you need to do to get your heat going. Now, when you cut off a rosebud, never cut the fuel off first. Always cut your oxygen off first. There's a big reason for this. I'm going to relight it and I'm going to show you. If you backfire a rosebud, it will not light back up properly. So, little flame. Pull it out. If you backfire it like that, it won't relight right the second time. I don't know why it does that, but something goes on up in here. It didn't get warm this time, but a lot of times it'll backfire all the way back to the body and it'll get hot and it won't regulate right. It'll start whistling and just won't do right. So always cut your oxygen off first, then your fuel. Okay, I was gonna go over a few things on cutting, what you need to do. As you can tell right there, I preheated that little strip where my cut line is. It's always a good idea to preheat your metal. It helps it cut a whole lot better. Another thing is torch angle. If you can tell, I'm close as I can be to 9 degrees to that plate to get a nice straight cut. Also, travel speed is very important. As in welding, you need to have very consistent travel speed to get a good cut. Not too slow, you'll burn your metal, and not too fast or it'll quit cutting. And the technique that I use to restart in a cut is heat the metal until it glows orange and then you'll see what I do right here is I'll pull away from the metal before I engage my oxygen that keeps you from having a big gouge so preheat I come back just a tiny bit as you can tell and that's how you know you did right when things fall off they don't stick And this is something that can't be learned in an hour. It takes a lot of time to get good with the torch. As you can tell there, preheat again. But that's pretty much all you need to know about that is practice. Another thing is wear a some form of shader lens. You can see how bright it is on camera. It's at least twice as bright in person. So use sunglasses, use something dark to shade your eyes because this stuff is bright. You you will see spots if you don't. So always a good tip on that.
Okay, one thing I'm going to point out real quick. These right here are known as drag lines. That's where the torch was cutting through there and the oxygen was sitting there burning the metal and the carbon out. So this is a fairly clean cut, meaning I've got all my, my tip was correct on my torch. My oxygen and fuel was set correctly. If you get stuff that looks like this, it means that you don't have something set right or you don't have the right travel speed or the right flame or anything like that so this right here is known as draws and if it starts piling up on you and gunking up on you you need to change something all of your cuts that you make should look like this so just a familiar so you can get know what you're looking for guys I was just sitting here welding and I forgot to talk about it few things. As far as safety wise on oxy fuel, uh, be sure that on your oxygen to cut the bottle all the way on and for your acetylene to only crack it a quarter of a turn. In case something happens, if you have a rupture in your line or anything like that, you can go and cut the acetylene off and it won't take you very long. Just cut it off real quick. The reason you cut your bottle on all the way on on the oxygen is it's got a special valve and if you don't open it up all the way it will leak. So just for that. Another thing, settling, you'll see that there's a warning label to do not pressurize settling your operating pressure over 15 psi. Don't do that. That's very, very dangerous. Like I said before, you can cut up to three inches with only five psi coming out on the settling side so there's no point in going 15 p over 15 psi none at all so don't do it everything else is pretty uh, explanatory use common sense is the biggest thing read up more about special tips different properties of the torches. There are different attachments that I didn't talk about that I just showed y'all the most common out there. Everything else, I'm trying to think. I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any comments or uh, requests, please put them in the comments. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to me if you hadn't already. And once again from Classic Work, Y'all take care. I gotta get back to work.